I think that what, what tends to happen is guys, they start drifting. Like when I sold my company, I, I noticed the drift coming in. When I, uh, when I made the most money I had ever made in my life in one year, uh, for whatever reason, I started to take my foot off the gas. And I stopped coming into the office. Uh, I started hanging out, partying a little bit more. Like, so I started drifting off the course that I knew had, had created all the success. And next thing you know, I'm like, I'm like way off course. And so we do that as human beings. And so the drift is killer, man. It, it's, it's what wipes out performance. So like we know, like as, as if, if you're on the, if they're on this call, right in the trades, we know marketing is a critical piece of growing a business. Yet, why aren't we consistently doing the marketing every week, making sure it's, we're continually putting in the work? It's Hey, what's up to the point listeners? It's your boy, Chris, the host of To The Point Home Services Podcast. And this is gonna be an interesting podcast, a great podcast. And no, I don't have Ken Goodrich on this particular episode. I don't have Ken Haynes, I don't have Dave Guy. It's completely different. This is one that's gonna make you tap into your vulnerability a little bit. You hear that, boys? They're listening, your vulnerability. Don't you love talking about that? Okay, listen, you get these guys on, on the other end of this had a, a, a very, uh, impactful uh, impact, or I have made a big impact on, on my life recently, uh, like just a little over a, a month ago. So much so that I decided to go out of the norm on these episodes and talk about it because I think it's that important. It's going to be something that is incredibly helpful to you, the listener, who's a business leader, business owner, um, because I guarantee you some of the things that we're going to go through are things that you have experienced or are currently experiencing, and there is solutions for these. And this was one for me. So I'm excited to have both these guys on here because both of these gentlemen are people who had a big impact on my life and we'll get, in, uh, we'll get into that. And I've had a lot of impactful leaders in business along the way, but not like this. This one was different. So I know we don't like to talk about our emotions and our feelings, but we're going to do a little bit of, the, of that on this podcast. But hang on, that doesn't mean you drop off right now because there's a lot of cool shit in here. Like we got a green beret on the line, okay? So, and he's going to tell some cool stories, but um, I want to just introduce both the gentlemen on the, on the other end of these microphones first. Number one being Mr. Skylar Lewis, who's the founder and CEO of Rise Up Kings. So also you have a superior restoration you had. You know, you got, he's an author, man. two-day CEO, by the way. I don't know that I could pull that off. Maybe you can tell me differently, but it might be a little different for me. But it's been very impactful for a lot of, of uh, a lot of other contractors too who have read that book and, and learned how to become a two day, two day CEO successfully. I think you're a CEO of like a multiple million dollar company. So Skyler's done a few things. He's built a couple of businesses, uh, but more importantly, he's got this great legacy that I think is called Rise Up Kings, which is your true calling. And I also want to introduce the other gentleman on this in the hat with the good looking beard chiseled chin that you can't see because the beard's a little thicker right now, but it's kind of crazy because you live in Phoenix, Arizona. So you think you want to keep that thing a little bit lighter. It's hot right now, <laughs> but we got Jeremy McWilliams on here as a head coach, green beret, and also successful businessman. I think you even do some business brokering uh, in your, in your past, which a lot of people on here listening to this have been down that path, especially with all the acquisitions that have been done in the home services space. But gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. I'm excited to have you both. Happy to be here. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Good to yeah. see your face again. Uh, thank you. Does it look a little bit? Yeah. Guys, listen, I've been on one since I left. I've been on one. I've been in the gym. I'm like stopping podcasts. I'm like stopping meetings. I'm like, sorry, I got an appointment with the gym today. And I'm feeling bigger. I'm feeling so much better. Yeah. And really all four pillars that we focused on. And so to give the listeners a little bit of an idea, I, I, I literally was feeling like I was in a funk and um, in business. And for some of the listeners know that I, my, I sold our business last year uh, in April and, um, and we stayed on board, we rolled equity. Like we're still very much involved in the business, but when you sell it, something changes in your brain a little bit. Like maybe your purpose has shifted and I had to refine that purpose. And it was impacting me in really all phases of my life. I didn't realize it until it started snowballing. And I realized, okay, like if you, if, if you have these uh, issues, I think you know, personally, it certainly impacts your business life or, or vice versa. Like there's, you know, I was not like, I was my, I was lost and I was just going through the motions. And that's a really crappy feeling is going through the motions and uh, somebody pays for that. And that might be your family, your wife, your kids, your employees, like your uh, customers, like somebody's being impacted by that, by me not stepping up and being and showing up for myself. So I went like last minute, this was a Monday. A Monday, I reached out to 
uh, Skyler's team, somebody on Skyler's team, I cannot remember the name of who it was, Thomas, I think it was, if that sounds right, mm-hmm. um, and said, Thomas, you guys don't have this refinery event for businessmen um, it, until September. I can't wait till September. Like, I, And then you have one like on Wednesday of that same week. And I'm like, please, whatever you got to do, like I need to get back on track. You know, I'm, I'm missing in my personal life. I'm missing in my business life. Like I'm missing with my faith. I'm missing with my, like, uh, I felt like really strong with my, with my family overall, but I was, I knew I was off and waiting to September was not an option for me. So you guys made it happen, man. Like, so literally on Monday afternoon, I booked the ticket to Dallas, Texas, and I got my ass kicked for a couple of days at Rise Up Kicks. And it was amazing. So thank you guys for doing that. I want to give a quick couple of shout outs. Not that they'll listen to this, but if they do, great. Um, just two other key players on this is Coach BJ, who was uh, probably the closest with me in that in that whole deal. Love BJ. And BJ was cool. He sold a you know a, a large plumbing company down in Texas. So he, you know, it it's uh it was cool to relate with him on a, on a couple of different levels. And he and I had similar struggles, which that made it easy to, you know, to talk through. And then also to God bless John Wood. That gentleman, wow, I have a whole new respect for him. Marine Corps for like a decade, you know, a couple decades of a canine officer in California. Um, listen, that dude was like, was he a drill sergeant ever? Because he is so good at being a drill sergeant. He's got a talent, that's for sure. He's got a talent. That yeah, you can see. Legit, right? Yeah, he was legit good. Like, I was like, oh, shit, what am I doing? I'm 45 years old. This is insane. So a shout, couple of shout out to those guys. But but what I want to hit on is I just want to share a couple of things before I ask some of the questions to the guys and have them share some of the things that we learned. And, and, and the whole point of this podcast is, is not about faith. It's not. If you make it about faith, that's fine. I'm telling you, it's not about faith. It's not about finding, you know, you're even using Rise Up Kings directly. It's about finding help where you need help uh, with whoever can help you get those things done. And for me, it was, it was rise up Kings. And that, that was the pivotal moment for me. These guys have worked with thousands of business owners and leaders that were going out of business, com- contemplating suicide, divorce, jail, addiction, you name it. Like, and I bet you, if you're listening, I might've just named off something that the majority of you have experienced, if not you, somebody in your family, but you've experienced some of that turmoil and somewhere in your subconscious, that stuff lives. I've learned that. And even though you don't know it, it's still in there and you got to try to get that stuff out. So, so, you know, what it what what rise up kings is i'll have these guys share with you versus me i'm just going to share with you my experience but hear me when i say this this was me struggling in my business and my personal life and rather than sit on the sidelines and let that take me over i did something about it and though i didn't think i could get in two days later to an event that had been planned probably well in advance they got me in and and, and it changed everything trajectory like today i'm hard to kill Jeremy I'm hard to kill yeah so uh and and I'm feeling really good about that and then my hope was to bring the same thing to you the listener because yes we might be talking about your personal life or even your faith or whatever but I'm telling you all if you are a business leader this is impacting you one way or another so you got to find solutions but you also got to find a, a, a group of brothers who you can be vulnerable with and share these things so the most impactful thing that Jeremy said to me right out of the gate, no offense, Skylar, because I think you went before him on this one, but was that he said to me, and actually, no shit, this is right before you went on Skylar, so we're, I'm, I'm good, I'm safe. But the first thing that was the most impactful thing is Jeremy says to us, we're going to dig into the deepest, darkest part of your cave, and we're going to pull all that stuff out into the light. And when he said that, like I was already locked in because I was committed. I had nothing to, I felt like I, I was like, listen, I came here, like I'm putting it all out there. And, and by the way, these are with a bunch of other men that I've never met, have no clue who they are, but they're all, we're all there for the same reasons. And, and maybe not the exact same reason, but within those four pillars, the faith, family, fitness, or finance, which we'll talk through, somebody needed help in those, in those four pillars. It's just that there are a lot of people who had the same, uh, problems to work through that I had, but didn't have the right tools to do it or didn't have the right motivation or whatever. So when you talk, think about you, the listener, just me saying, Hey, can you imagine you going into the deep, dark cave that nobody knows your stuff, the stuff that maybe you're ashamed of, or that you've done wrong, you want nobody to know about, and then you're going to bring it out and tell these group of people that you've never met. That probably makes your heart pound a little harder right now. It gives you butterflies in your stomach. That's what it did for me. 
But I, again, like I was there to get all that stuff out because I don't think you realize how much that impacts what your life can be without getting it out. I carried that with me for so long. And, and I don't want to tell you where I left it at Rise Up Kings, but I left it in multiple places, in multiple exercises at Rise Up Kings. I left the stuff out of my cave and I moved on. And I'm on one, boys. And I have you to thank for it. So I appreciate that. So sometimes you, the best business decision that you can make is actually not working on the business at all. It's actually working on yourself. And this might require you letting go of your pride. Actually, it's probably going to require you letting go of your pride. And because I follow the rules of the journal that I write in every single day that I got from Skylar, one of my goals was to make sure that I memorize the Bible verse every single week. So to attach it to pride, it was Proverbs 16. Pride comes before destruction, a haughty mm -hmm. spirit before the fall. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the verses that I, you know, that I had to, um, uh, in our daily journaling that, you know, from, from one of the books that Skylar gave us, which I, by the way, like is how I start my routine every day. Hmm. Gets me thinking about that. And that's come up so many times for me, like even in my relationship, cause you leave and you got to have some accountability when you're done. Like, you don't just like, Oh, sh I changed my life in two days. And then you go back home and it's like, so you have to have some ongoing accountability, but think about how that one shows up in business in business, because we never want to admit when we're wrong or rarely do we want to admit when we're wrong. Um, but it's actually an, I think it's an absolute superpower to admit when you're wrong. So that way you can get to the end result faster and move forward. Like telling you, I reset my purpose at this place. I got the tools. I have the ongoing accountability. Skylar, you built that. Jeremy, you drove that home in the exercises. And here we sit. So listeners, if you're struggling in any one of those four pillars, you are not alone. Trust me. How many thousands of people have you guys worked with over the short period that this thing's been around a few years through three, four years, however long it's been like, you are not alone. And think about how many, these guys are telling me how many trades folks go to this mm -hmm. a lot, a lot. So what I want to do is just ask a couple of questions. So, so here's the biggest takeaway to all the listeners. And by the way, I don't expect you to go and make some posts publicly on some of this stuff because most people don't, but privately you're welcome to message me on anything. And in both these guys as well, I'm sure but on anything that might be bothering you or that's holding you back and you want to open up to somebody, I will happily be that guy and we'll keep it between us. I just want to put that out there. So what I want to do, Skylar, is I'll, I'll kick it off with you, is just let the listeners know, um, maybe at a, at a higher level, well, you kind of know the, the drill. Just kind of let them know what Ruck is all about, what Rise Up Kings is all about, and why you even started. You already had successful businesses. You had the money. You had the things. Like So like, t tell us, you know, what and why? Yeah, man. So uh, appreciate all the kind words uh, for, for the, that you gave for Ruck, man, and the work that we're doing. And yeah, dude, it was born out of it was born out of some pain and some challenges, right? I had built multiple uh, uh, companies before, so construction companies. I had a restoration company. Life was good, but dude, I still struggled. So I was still dealing with uh, life's challenges. So I, I was what you call a one or two pillar man. So I was great at business. Right. Even though it was challenging, I was giving my all in business. But my wife, uh, many times and my kids, there were some sacrifices that I was making with them. Right. And so they were they were the ones kind of being left in the dark. And so it was born out of dude, me trying to figure out how the heck do it, because because I was a high performer. And a lot of the guys and a lot of the women that listen to your podcast, they're high performers. Right. They're high performers. And so we can get as high performers, we can get stuck with stress or we can get struck with boredom. I found the two things that really cause a man or a woman to burn everything down, right? To sabotage their life is when the stress is over the top or is when they get bored, when they sell a company, when something happens, that boredom can cause a man to literally sabotage and start burning their kingdom down piece by piece. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it, man. That was, that was me. And so I was like, man, there's gotta, there's gotta be a better way. Like I'm good at business. But how do I stay balanced with all this stuff? Like, how do I how do I kill it in business, but also kill it in my marriage and be present with my kids and not be on my phone at home? How do I love God? And how do I stay physically fit, take care of my body? I'm like, dude, this is freaking hard. Like, there's got to be a process for this. Yep. And, and there wasn't a process that I could find. And so I went and just started started di diving in, man, started working on stuff myself, started tracking habits, started doing a lot of deep personal development work. And I realized like a lot of the, I had made some dumb decisions, man. And early on, I, I cheated on, 
uh, the woman that became my wife, like early on in the relationship, like jacked it up, uh, was grinding hard and thought a little one night stand would, uh, kind of just not be a big deal. And it ended up doing a lot of damage. And so I, um, uh, yeah, man. So I, I kept all this stuff in the dark, a lot of stuff. And I realized that that stuff in the dark starts to eat away at you. And so I, I started to, started to kind of open up and share some stuff and realize there's a lot of healing and power that was being taken from me by keeping it in the dark. And so my journey, man, was that was, was starting to live in the light was starting to have a process for being a four pillar man was starting to be authentic and have good character and be a man of integrity and be a man of my word. And as I started to dive into those, like I became a different version of myself and I produced a lot more results. My team trusted me more. My wife trusted me more. Like I was able to start to step away from the business. I was able to really build an incredible system and systemization, which is really one of my giftings is, is systemizing businesses. And so, yeah, I launched Rise Up Kings to support more men, dude, on if the, we have a lot of high achievers, dude, that come through. Like we have ex fighter pilots. We have guys that built hundred million, a couple hundred million dollar companies. We've had tons of NFL players. We've had guys that just are running a $500,000 company. But when they come through Ruck, something happens and something shifts in their heart where they, I don't know. It just changes them at a core level. It's not like a teaching event. Like something happens at a soul level where they now get to the next level and they're already good or even great. And man, they're able to play at a whole nother level. So that's, that's why I love this thing, man. I'm, I've gone all in I sold my company uh, to a private equity company, a private equity firm. And, and I'm rocking, I'm rocking hundred percent in, in rise of Kings right now. So I love it. We'll shout out to Jessica, not that she'll listen to this, but if she is shout out to you, Jessica, uh, scholars way. Um, and I, Oh, I forgot to do this too, by the way, shout out to my, uh, my pod 48 boys that are list that'll be listening to this too. Um, so yeah, thanks for that Skylar too. And, and it's great because you had this business background and, and, and all, obviously this whole thing started from your vulnerability of pulling your stuff out of your dark cave and putting mm -hmm. it out front. Listen, yeah. I don't care who you are listening to this thing. We all got something in that cave, something in there and nobody wants to talk about it, but I'm telling you when you do it, you have this weight lifted off of you and you're kind of like, like it, it, now I can go. And, and I, I would like think like, okay, maybe there's something there. You never really know. But when you do it, you know, you can feel the weight off you. Like I, I, I can't remember who I was telling, but like, I came back and talked to my wife for like seven hours straight, wow. seven hours. We had a wow. full on, like long conversation. And I was like, give it to me. Like, tell me all the things I need to hear all the pain points because Jeremy would always say like, Hey, you know, we got work to do, you know, we got to do the hard work. You got to do the hard work. Well, every day is hard work. Once you kind of get that in your brain, like every, I wake up, I'm beating my 5.30 a.m. alarm clock. Like that's the game I'm playing with myself right now is I'm going to wake up and I'm going to win right out the gate. But you just are making a mental shift, but you got to feel the pain. Jeremy, you said, hey, we're two guys that go to a knife fight, you know, <laughs> and it's, you're going to get cut. Like, well, you just, you already know you're going to get cut. So just get after it. Go, go, go stab the person, right? Like, don't be afraid you're going to get cut. You know, you're going to get cut. Just, you know, face it and go after it like that. Those little things like stuck a lot. And you, and we use a lot of those things, you know, and, and that, and it works um, in this context. Yeah. It yeah, yeah. really works. Yeah. So, so I appreciate that. And, um, you know, it, those are just little bit, little bitty things, but Jeremy, I want to tell you, um, you know, when I was talking to you after this one, you're here in Phoenix as well, which is fantastic. The way there's such a huge brotherhood here in Phoenix that that we can uh, you know, help one another and, and be a part of it and kind of keep that closeness. I think that's necessary. Is the ongoing relationships, but your stories were so impactful to me and how you tied it back to, you know, like we didn't have the same story, but some of the same deeper issues you know come from our stories, and so they're making relatable. And every time you would speak, because I'm a very empathetic guy too, like I'm a competitor, I want to win. I'm also a very empathetic guy when you would speak and get goosebumps like you're and which happens to you all the time because you get passionate about your story mm -hmm. i'm getting goosebumps i'm talking about it getting goosebumps maybe you're getting them too i just can't see them <laughs> but i want you to share with the listeners just a little bit of you know maybe share a little bit of your story you know um because even though you're a head coach you lived this crazy green beret life you know and saw some incredibly uh, awful things, you know, that, that it would impact, uh, maybe crush a lot of people who cannot recover from these things. Um, yet you've taken it and used it for, for good. And, and to me, you were very impactful in this experience for me. Um, and, and I, it, I wanted the listeners to hear some of those things in hopes that it impacts them too. So maybe just share a little bit of, of your story and then how you've applied that still you know, that to your life. Cause you're a successful business guy too. So maybe just share all those things if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, 
Well, what you're referencing is, uh, is yeah, I'm a, I'm a Green Beret. So I, I joined the Army right after 9-11. And so I was in college studying theology at Oral Roberts University. 9-11 happens. It nukes my whole world. And so I quickly finished college, enlist in the United States Army. My mother was pissed. Like I enlisted in the Army 18 days after I graduated from college. And uh, I went to the 82nd Airborne as a parachute infantryman. My first deployment, I ran across some guys rocking cool beers and like cool kit and was thinking to myself, like, I can absolutely do that. The weakest guy there, I think I could kill him if we had to fight to the death. So that means I can get in. I can meet whatever threshold there is. I believe I can meet it. And so then uh, I immediately after that deployment, I immediately go to what we call selection and I got selected. And then I went through two and a half years of the special forces qualification course. Uh, and so after two and a half years, I became an expert in demolitions, uh, had to learn to speak Mandarin Chinese. I'm from central Mississippi, by the way, and have a hard time with English, yet the <laughs> army and its infinite wisdom decided to give me the most complex language known to man. Uh, yeah, so that was fun. Uh, had to learn to speak Mandarin Chinese and then became an expert in, in like effectively unconventional warfare. So after that two and a half years, I went to work as a Green Beret for many years. In 2010, I got hit on a rooftop in the Goresh Valley of Helmand province in Afghanistan. Took about eight hand grenades on a rooftop with some buddies. Um, we, uh, we crawled off the roof of the second story, landed right on my face. I was actually way more handsome before all that happened. I mean, I, like people would call me like the father of my generation. Yeah, so I was way more handsome. Uh, and so then I, I fell off the roof uh, and then it was, it was a, I had no ability on my own strength to get myself to the helicopter, like to, to the medevac helicopter, right? The, there's a helicopter that came in to save us, but it was after about a two hour gunfight, uh, which I couldn't participate in because I was, I had taken a handful of grenades, like very, very close. So I had, my whole lower body had gotten hit and, uh, and it was another man, his name is Aaron and Aaron looked at me as the helicopter was coming in and he's like, Hey bro, you ready to roll? And I, at this point I've cut my pants off. I have no pants on. I just have boots on. I have my kit, I have my rifle, I have my helmet, but no pants. Right. And just like a bloody mess all the way, like from the waist down. And so, uh, I grab Aaron's drag strap. He sort of sits up and he's just dragging me. He's carrying all of my weight. And he literally runs with me under fire and delivers me to the back of this helicopter. And then my team, fought to keep us alive, to get us to this helicopter. And, uh, and, and that, well, so I should back up a bit. My wife was eight months pregnant with our first child at that moment, at that exact moment. So everything in me wanted to get to the helicopter, right? Like I'm very motivated to get to this helicopter. I want to live. I want to meet my daughter. I want to see my wife again. Uh, but it wasn't my motivation that got me to the helicopter. It was a man and his name is Aaron. And so, um, we get to the helicopter, medevac gets us out of there. I go through a few weeks of surgeries in different countries and stuff. I get home. My wife gives birth while I'm still like completely tore up. Um, but that story has been so impactful to me in all these different ways. And it shows up here at Ruck in ways that it's like, sometimes it's even hard to articulate because so often we think that I just need to get it together. I just need to, I need to work harder in this. I need to do more here. I need to, yeah. Okay. And could it be true that what you need is community? That, like the, really like there, all the motivation was in me to get to the helicopter, but it wasn't my motivation that got me there. It was Aaron that got me there. And so then when we, when we do these events here at Rise Up Kings, you, you made an important point earlier, is that it isn't just about what happens here. It's about how you go home and the impact, the, the transformation will happen here. There's something shifts in a man's heart here. And it's nothing that the coaches do. We're just nurses that set up an operating room. It's the almighty that's the surgeon, right? Like there's no words from Coach Jeremy. There's no words from Skylar that's going to transform your heart. What happens there is like truly God shows up at every single event and does transformational work in the hearts of men. And then you go home and life kicks you in the chest like it does all of us. And it's that support group around us that helps keep us oriented. that helps keep us like pointing us back to Christ. That points us back to the men that we say we want to be 
And so when we start acting in ways that, that aren't congruent with who we say we want to be, that it's other men who've been through this experience, who have the same language we have, that can look down at you and say, man, you ready to go? And you can grab their drag strap and they can carry you back to the helicopter of showing up like the man you say you want to be. Yeah, I love it. And you know, and Skylar, I think on one of the, um, well, Good. first, I know that whole story and the part you left out and uh, I will we'll leave that there, but it was, <laughs> this was a, yes. Wow. Um, yeah, I, but the, the point of that story is um, the community piece of it too and how you use it and apply it, you know, every, every day. And that is true. It sounds silly, like, you're thinking, well, I, no, I don't like what this community got to do with it. A community has to do a lot with it. Cause once you get your stuff out and it's, and you don't have to be afraid of it and it's out in the light and that community knows it, there's nothing to hold back. Like you can kind of talk about all those things. Who are you talking about it with? Like the, the idea of community exists right there. Like that we're responsibly vulnerable with people that will like respect and love us when we show up responsibly vulnerable, when we bear our chest and show, like, but it's not saying that you go to Walmart, get on the, you know, get on the, the horn over the, <laughs> over the loudspeaker and be like, Hey, uh, there's a cleanup on aisle four. And I was molested as a child. So like, <laughs> right. That isn't the place for that. Right. Yeah. But what we've created here is a place where there is a level of responsible vulnerability that we ask you to step into here, because if you leave it in the dark, that's where the mold grows. Like what's left in the dark will grow and fester. And all of a sudden the mold, like the, the mold is that silent killer. Like it, it, it will, it will negatively impact you, even though you can't necessarily, even though others can't see it, it's negatively impacting them. And so what we encourage men to do here is to open up and get responsibly vulnerable. And a lot of the times the coaches lead the way in that. We'll step out in front and show you, here's what it looks like. Yeah, I, and, and Skylar, I, I love that. And, and you're right, like the biggest piece of this is, and by the way, like to the listeners, are there other things you can go do? Of course, there's a bunch of different things. I've tried different things, but there's something different going on here. And I think the something different is I think I've always challenged myself physically as a way to say, Hey man, I feel like I'm falling short on my mental fortitude. So I'm going to go run like a tough mutter. I'm going to go do something like that. And, and I stopped doing those things before, like after COVID hit. So now I was doing nothing. So, but it really wasn't ever the physical piece I needed to get rid of. It was the emotional stuff I needed to get out. So I want to talk about something real quick. Is Skylar one of the first uh, follow up calls that we have? Because I have seems like I've got. By the way, thanks a lot for making the uh, the um, these weekly meetings at five thirty a.m. my time. I really appreciate that one. Um, good well, news we, is we got to get you out of the West Coast, man. <laughs> into Texas. The good news <laughs> is is because I've now challenged myself to get up at five thirty every day. I only got to get up at five fifteen on that day. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you talked about one of these the drift that happens. Yeah. And, um, and so I, I want to talk about you to talk about two things. One, we, you know, we've heard it say a couple of different times on you to you know, go into the cave and pull your, and pull your stuff out and into the light. I want you to, to explain why, why that's important. I don't want to just assume that everybody understands why it's important to me. It seems like, well, yeah, you put, you, you got to talk about, there's some depth to it. Maybe explain, and obviously Jeremy jump in, whatever, but explain why pulling all that stuff out of the dark is important. And then um, if you would maybe follow up on this drift on what you like when you're talking to us about the drift on why that's so important. I think, I think that's the most critical piece of all this because it's the longer, it's the longer part of the, of the journey. So maybe just talk about, well, you know, why it's important to pull all that stuff out. I'm, I'm bummed. I can't talk about the things that we do because it's oh, like, man. it's so, but you should have some FOMO. Like you have FOMO. It's not, it's like physical, it's emotional. It's all the things, but Talk about the dark cave, why it's important to pull it out, and then and then segue into the drift, if you would, please. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, so what we're playing here is is an identity game, All right? So a lot of people miss it. So think about a, a, an iceberg, right? At the very tip, at the top of the iceberg is what we think, who we think we are, right? All of our behaviors. But really, who we are, man, it goes well below the surface and is gigantic, and that's all of our belief systems. That's our subconscious. It's, it's who we believe we are. And 85% of that was installed between the ages of eight and 12 to 14 years old. So like who you are as a human being is not, is not the last couple of years. It's the last 30, 40 years of belief systems that have been put in place. And so we say, we want to go in the dark, man. We want to go below the surface. We want us like the reason you're not doing what you know, you need to be doing with your wife 
or the reason you're having a hard time emotionally opening up to your wife or being present with your kids is not, you just don't need to get off your phone. Dude, there's something that's stopping you that's well below the surface. And it could be a belief system that was created, right? I'm not smart enough or, hey, I've, uh, I'm not worthy or I'm not, whatever it may be, some BS belief system that stops somebody from truly like living their life. And so what we do is we like to uncover some of that stuff. We like to like dig in and say like, hey, what could have been created? Like, hey, when your dad was abusive or when you didn't get the love you needed as a kid or there was a mom issue or dad issue or whatever, like that stuff, just so you know, that impacts you for the rest of your life until you go back in, into the dark crevices, uncover it, figure out what meaning was created. Like what meaning did I create about that experience? And then how do I reframe and reprogram that belief to now allow me to be more present? So we produce more results when we go back and when we do some deep work versus just trying to change behavior, behavior modification. I just gotta go work out more. It's like, ah, yeah, and you're gonna stop working out. I just gotta, I just need to do this. It's like, yes, you're trying to do behavior modification Man, we got to do identity work. Like the identity works what what creates long term transformation, and so I think that's where a lot of people miss it. And the deal is, there's just so much new age stuff out there. You don't really where do you go to go do the identity work? Right. Like what's out there? Like I don't I don't trust a lot of it. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so and the good. Yeah. yeah, no, I was gonna say. So yeah, I want you to go before. Actually, before you do that, let me just I want to say one thing. Um, everybody had like it was everybody has something that ha not everybody. Not everybody has something that happened to them in, in the past. A lot of people probably have something in there, but there's plenty of people that are coming to this. They're just trying to be better. Like they don't really have, you know, like a couple of guys in my group were just there to be better businessmen and kind of refocus their purpose. So, so though we're kind of talking a lot about getting deep in the cave, yeah. that's just, that, that's just how, I think that probably happens to be the majority, but there's plenty of businessmen going there just trying to reset. There's just good to great guys. We have a, we have half the guys are like, Hey dude, I got some, I got some stuff that's blocking me. Right. And then the other half, like, hey, man, I got a, I got a good life. I got a good marriage, got a good business, got a, everything is good, but I'm like, I'm stuck. I'm at a plateau. I want to get to the next level. And so, yeah, great point. Uh, so the drift, I, th I think that it, what, what tends to happen is guys, they start drifting. Like when I sold my company, I, I noticed the drift coming in. When I, uh, when I made the most money I had ever made in my life in one year, uh, for whatever reason, I started to take my foot off the gas. And I stopped coming into the office. Uh, I started hanging out, partying a little bit more. Like, so I started drifting off the course that I knew had, had created all the success. And next thing you know, I'm like, I'm like way off course. And so we do that as human beings. And so the drift is killer, man. It, it's, it's what wipes out performance. So like, we know, like, as, as if, if you're on the, if they're on this call, right in the trades, we know marketing is a critical piece of growing a business. Yet, why aren't we consistently doing the marketing every week, making sure it's, we're continually putting in the work? It's it's because we get lazy and we start drifting. And so I think uh, what prevents the drift is having accountability, is having a clear plan, it's having associations of people that are all striving together and working towards something similar as being around like-minded associations. Uh, so those things can help pull a guy out of a drift when they start drifting. Yeah. And, and what's been interesting about it is, you know, I, I think that the follow-up has been so good. Like I'm blown away by the volume of contact I have from people I don't know who've been a part of this group who reach out to me to check on me. Now I've under, now I understand why it's a system that you've created and it's fantastic because this is something I've preached for you. I've done 500 keynotes breakout, like over the course of the years. And the one thing I always pitch to everybody is this 95, five rule, 95% 95 of the people in the room will go home and do nothing with what they've learned. They'll just get back into the normal routine while the other 5% will go back, implement, do the things. This is, this is like, I, I was experiencing that. Like I needed to be the 5% that went back and did the things, but at least, at least you've created a system and a process that has ongoing accountability to keep us on track to do the things. Not everybody's as uh, disciplined or as good as you are, my friend, right? So yeah, you're the 5%, but what about the 95% of guys that have good intentions? They just don't have a good process, right? They don't have a good process to go, uh, to go plug into, but that their, their will, their desire is good. Like, Hey, I'm going to implement this. It's way harder than that. Like you gotta, unless you're a, high, a real, real high performer, which based on your results, right? You've done that. And so we want to pull all men up to that, that high, high, high performance, performance level.
men and women. But. Yeah, yeah, and we'll we'll talk about the rise of queen stuff in, in a little bit. But I, I do think that the, uh, the the two critical things for me, I think that have been helpful on keeping me engaged every day. The journal, like journaling, is not new. So it's like, why did it take the ninety day journal that you gave me to start freaking journaling? But the way that it's laid out has put me in a new routine, and I don't miss it. Like that's how I start my day. So I'm getting up earlier and that's all I'm doing for the first hour is just journaling and then, you know, getting into prayer. And then like some of the verses make me think like it takes me a half hour just to figure out what the hell that thing meant, you know? But you're um, reprogramming though. That, I mean, that's what that's doing, right? Like you're reprogramming this previous limiting belief. Like, so by you showing up with consistency, you are reprogramming yourself to be the kind of man that wakes up early to be the kind of man that follows through with what he says he's going to do. Like you're, you're literally actively right now in the process of reprogramming. It's yeah. Cool. I mean, yeah. And, and like, it, it's just, it gave me the tools and the, it gave me the tools to, to do it. Like, and I bought into it. Right. And so when that 90 day journal is done, like I've been sitting there thinking like, what the hell, when I write that last page, what's next for me? I need to get, I'm like, Skylar, can you send me like three more of those so I can get through the year? You know, I mean, and, and maybe by the end of that too, like I, I, I take on a different way of journaling. Maybe I do a similar model, like it works for me, but I am doing the hard work, you know, and, and in my brain, what I've taken away from this is I swear when I wake up, I'm like, man, you know, men like us do things like this. Like we do the hard work and, um, and I don't want to get up at five 30. I want to get up at five 25 because the alarm hasn't went off yet. Like that's just something that I, when I'm waking up, I'm thinking about that that was already different. So, you know, I don't get up and go work out in the morning. I know Jeremy gets up and then goes until he sweats through his clothes, you know, by whatever the hell you might, your MMA stuff that you're doing or whatever. I'm not doing all that. I do that at four 30. Okay. But I don't miss the four thirties. <laughs> um, but I am retraining my brain to follow these things. But what I like about it is and listen, call me old school. I love the fact that there's so much technology with Rise Up Kings, with the app and the emails and the and the text messaging and the and the mentor groups and all these things that kind of keep everybody engaged. But I'm still a little old school too. Like I like to write things down and cross things off and check things off. And 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 the journaling allows you to do that. I, I hope I get to check the box. And I've not had to. I've not checked the boxes all the time on my four pillars. Yeah. And that sucks to not check that box. And I'm like, damn. Then I got to write it down. Why? What did I miss? And then what am I going to do differently today? So I'm holding myself accountable and I'm on day 33. I think I'm on day 33 or 34, somewhere around there. Um, and it's working. So, um, I'm like, I missed one. I went to Las Vegas for a concert and I missed a day of journaling and looking at that empty page like sucks. And I go back and look at the empty page. You know, just so I can feel the pain of missing that empty. Ooh, I know that that's was. good, Chris. That's so good. Listen, like when if, if you if you start to reframe yourself in that way, that is that is a that's a beautiful thing to behold of like getting like what you're doing is like taking a different look, a different mindset on the pain. And it's like if you start to reassociate waking up early with, yeah, I want it. I, I want to wake up. I, I like it when it hurts. And like James chapter one, verses two, three, and four, count it all joy, my brothers, when you face trials of many kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance and perseverance must finish its work so that you can be whole and complete, lacking nothing. And when that thing gets like inside you, all of a sudden you find yourself looking for pain and you find yourself being the person that can stand and look at where you're falling short. And like, like, it'd be an interesting question for business owners. So it'd be like, if you're listening, ha have a, like, ask yourself a question. If your business was broken, would you want to know about it? Like if, if there's an aspect of your business that was broken, would you want to know about it? If there was something showing up in your life, in your personal life, that was not what you want, but you couldn't see it, would you want to know about it? And it's like most people say yes to that. But when it comes time to put 10 toes in the sand and have a look at the actual thing, most people find a way to make excuses away from it or sedate so they don't have to look at it. But dude, when you can stand there and look at that blank page and own it, like, yeah, I don't like that feeling. Like, I don't like the feeling of met, like that is not who I say I want to be and stand there and be with that feeling. And now do that all these other places. Do what, what's broken in your business and stand there and look at it. Don't make excuses for it. Don't, 
Don't sedate away. Don't pretend like it isn't there. No, go look at it. And instead of picking up shame, we pick up curiosity. Man, I wonder why that is that way. I wonder what's going. I wonder what's going on in me that's producing that result. I wonder the way in which I'm communicating that people are responding in that way. Like we start getting curious, man. All of a sudden, like questions precede clarity. So the more questions you start asking, the more clear you're going to get. The more answers are going to come. And it, it's a when we can reframe or like put on a different pair of lenses or take a different mindset with our relationship with pain or with discomfort or our own falling short, when we can just stand there and be with it, beautiful things start happening. God, I felt, I felt like I was back. I felt like I was back in Texas just now. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. See when, when he, when you get on one, Jeremy, like, it's yeah. like, I, like, I, I love it when you're on one like that. Cause that just like, you felt it and you just let it rip. You send it. And I loved it. Uh, I want to talk about two quick things too. I want to transition, you know, to Skylar. Um, one thing that we hit on really, really hard there was to do those hard things, Jeremy, what is the purpose? And that purpose has to be crystal clear. And, and I actually struggled, like struggled overthinking. What is my purpose? And I struggled because I wasn't getting granular enough to like make it, make me feel that to be like, is this, what would you give up? for this. Like, it's gotta be that impactful that you like this purpose has to drive you to do the, the hard work. And, um, and that was a harder, like it took me, it took me a while. There was, uh, there's one specific event that happened in this event that made me find my purpose. It was once, I can't even say it. It's a bummer, but there was one event that made me piece it all together. Was that, um, was that day three? That was day three. Okay. Got and uh, so you know what that is. So, mm -hmm. so that's really important. And I, what I want to do, because our listeners are probably like, okay, like we're, we're hearing all these things and we're hearing outcomes and we're hearing the, you know, the, like the, some of the psychological things that we're going through, the emotional things that you're doing, but we're not talking about the tactics. Mm -hmm. And I know we can't share some things. So, so rather than me uh, say anything that I can't say, what I would rather do is just let you, Skylar, maybe just talk about what you can some of these activities, you know, that we have to do, there's physically demanding activities, there's emotionally demanding. And by the way, you got no excuse of your age or your size. Cause we had a really old guy named Jose, who was a trip in my class, who was the first guy who ever, I think said yes to coach John saying, Hey, do you have more jokes when he's yelling at him? And Jose says, yes. I was like, Oh dear God, this is how we're going to start to sing up. Uh, but, but age doesn't matter. And, and we had a, you know, another guy, Joe, who's a really big guy. And I watched that dude do some physical stuff. Like it is possible. So you got no excuse, but, but because I can't, you know, I can't share any of the activities, maybe just share what you can Skylar on. Like, what are some of the things that we're, that you're doing to, to, to drill those lessons home? I know we, I know we speak in metaphors a lot too, right? But like, what are the, some of the things that, that you can talk about that we're doing? So people get an idea of like, anything of what to expect it's not church camp by the way yeah 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 no there's a big gap man there's a there's a gap in christianity where it's gotten a little a little soft right men have gotten soft in our in our country and around the world so we're bringing some intensity um and so i, I don't believe jesus was soft at all dude that guy had hard hands he was a carpenter he was direct he like called people out to their face like you don't get any more real and raw than Jesus. Yeah, we have we, we picture him with this flowing hair and holding a baby and a lamb, and you know, it, like that's our visualization of Jesus. Like, dude, Jesus was a beast. Like he was calling calling shit out, like on on the regular all day long. Like that's who he was. So it's like, so we're, we want we want to we do want to and doing it with kindness and thoughtfulness. But uh, so really, like what what's happened? I think is uh, there's just a lot of. We're missing the mark. And so what happens is at a lot of events, there's teaching. It's just a lot of teaching that happens. And so what we what we've done is we've made it all experiential. So you go to a conference and conferences are great, but what are they where they where they miss is like we can only retain so much information at a conference, right? But when you can make it experiential, when you can bring an experience that hits home the point, when you can bring an experience that uncovers something that you didn't realize was there a limiting belief or you can have an experience that shows how weak you really are or you can have it versus saying hey you're weak it's like hey what if we had an experience that showed you your gaps and your blind spots like that just ar arose naturally through the experience and so that's really what the process is uh and then we do it around the four pillars and the faith family fitness and finances and, and tactically i just want to share this for a moment for all the listeners like 
don't be a, a one or two pillar man. So a four pillar man is, or a woman is, a, is someone that invests every day in their faith. So that's reading the Bible daily or whatever your faith is, right? That, that's investing in their marriage. That's doing something nice for your wife every day. So whether it's a love note or a, uh, what are you doing? What do you do? What's, what's working for you right now, Chris? Yeah. By the way, I've had to do a bunch of these. So, cause it's part of my, part of my journaling. Yeah. Love notes, uh, making intimate time, listening better, you know, like making sure I do, I put my phone down less and have like more intimate conversations, like making sure I'm, we work together. So I'm like, okay, cool. Today I got to go in there and make sure I give her five kisses today. I go home and I did four. I'm like, damn it. Unless I missed one. I got it back. But those are just a few things because that's yeah. part of the daily routine. Yeah. It's so critical. So we need a process. That's, that's what we realized. So this is the tactical side of how do you become a the next level version of yourself, right? So it's it's doing these things daily. So it's investing in your marriage because uh, as a man or a high performing woman, you're going to get so focused on creating and executing and results that you sometimes you might neglect the relationship. So we got to do it daily. And then fitness, exercising every single day. So some kind of exercise. And then uh, I'm giving the shortened version. And then finance, learning something new, like leveling up. That's why I love that you have the podcast, right? It's cause it's they can get a nugget from your podcast, right? Uh, probably a lot of nuggets, but so so learning something new daily. So if you do those four pillars and you level up those four pillars together, you start to become a four pillar man or a four pillar woman versus a guy that's really successful, but his marriage is broken, he's overweight, and he has no faith. Right. So it's like, how do we be a four pillar version? So at the event, we start to expose those things. We give some tools, but then, but for the audience, though, if, if for whatever reason they don't make the event, dude, start to build a tracking sheet where you track your four pillar investment every day and start journaling like Chris is talking about and start reflecting on where you could be better, how you could shift every single day. And just that process by itself will cause someone to level up. What, what are your thoughts, Jeremy? Warriors aren't built in a classroom. They're built in a field. Warriors got to bleed. Hmm. Hmm. Like, well said. You, yeah, you, no soldier becomes a soldier from a classroom. No Marine becomes a Marine in a classroom. Like you want to play at a high level. You want like one of the things we talk about here. One of the things I talk about here is being a special operator for the kingdom. So I spent about a decade training special operators for war. And now what I do is train special operators for the kingdom. You want to play at this level. You want to have a relationship with your wife, with your kids, with your business, with your community, with your church, with your employees. You want to have a business that's operating at like high levels. Then you're going to have to do some things that other people are unwilling to do. And so like when you go, when you sign on the dotted line and you join the army, you go through basic training. It's basic training. And you get yelled at and you have to do all the push-ups and all the things. Then you go to a unit somewhere and then you keep training. Like you don't stop bleeding. And then if you want to level up from there, you want to get to the next level, there's more pain. So like, get it. Like you think you're going to live some pain-free life. You get to choose your heart. You can, you can not choose what goes into your mouth or what goes into your eyes. And you can experience the pain of the choices that you've made. Or you can take your pain on deciding not to eat that thing or not to watch that thing. You take your pain on the front end and then live a life that's commensurate with who you say you want to be. Either way, pain is in your future. It's cloudy with a chance of pain. That's your forecast. You get to, you get to choose the way in which it comes down the pipe. And so like for me, man, warriors aren't built in a classroom. They're built in a field and warriors got to bleed. So you come see us. <laughs> I want to say, we're going to make you bleed. <laughs> I love this guy so much. You're going to get cut. Yeah. Like there's two, what Chris is referencing there is you tell this little story of like, there's two men that show up for a knife fight. One guy shows up trying to not get cut. And the other guy shows up trying to win, recognizing getting cuts part of the process. Like bro, you're going to get cut. So like, it's whether or not you want to play. Do you want to play at a high level? Do you want a high level relationship with your wife? Like deep, intimate, passionate, connected relationship with your wife. You want that with your kids? You want that with your business and your employees? Well, if you don't have that now, based on results, what you've been doing up to now is not effective. No shame. Let's do, like leave the shame aside. Let's pick up curiosity. Man, what is it that isn't working? What is it about me that isn't working? 
And when we develop a, a willingness to stand there, put 10 toes in the sand and have a look at what about the way in which I'm showing up isn't working. And maybe you can't see it and you need other people to be able to speak into your life to help you see it. Skyler's remarkable at giving feedback. I mean, he's remarkable at it. And when he gives me feedback or when I give him feedback, like it, it happened, like he'll say something hard to me and I don't take it like he doesn't love me. No, the, the dude is like, he's absolutely committed to what I say I'm committed to, which is being the best possible version of me. And he's willing to say something hard to me, say something difficult to me to help me be who it is I say I want to be. And if you don't have people like that in your life, maybe it's time to maybe it's time to acquire some higher quality associations because we are an amalgamation of the top five people that we spend the most time around. And if you take a look, if you take an inventory of your friends, the people that are near you, you take an inventory of the five closest people to you and you don't like what you see, bro, you're responsible for that. Like then change, Ch like change the group that you're with to be more in line with who you say you want to be. And if you don't want to do that, like, okay, but don't complain about not experiencing the things you want to experience out of this life. Man, I just love hearing Jeremy talk. <laughs> Dude, man, he's so freaking good. God, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I just get, because, because it's come, oh, like, it, this is, it's real. It's yeah. passion. It's belief. It's like all the things. And I think because he's seen so much on the other side on uh, in, in ways of transformation, like real life stories, like it allows you to continue to speak passionately about it. Cause you know, like, you know what the impact is and the impact is great. And at scale, it's even better. Right. And that's what rise up Kings is creating that sort of change and transformation in all kinds of men and women. And, and that's a, that's a, that's a phenomenal impact on the King mm -hmm. for sure. And I'm, and I'm happy to be a part of it. You, there's one mm -hmm. thing I'll share with you guys. And then I want to, I want to do a, a a couple things for the listeners who have made it this far. That means you're really in and paying attention to this, but there's one thing that this isn't revolutionary that you said to me, Jeremy, but, or the, uh, that, but you said it and it's stuck. And I have this conversation with my son, he's 13. So I have the same conversation with him. And again, it's, I don't know why it took you saying it in that moment to stick, maybe because whatever physical pain I was enduring at the time made it, made it stick to me. Um, but it was, uh, how you do anything is how you do everything. And, and you learn that lesson on day three, right in the first part of the day. And, um, when nobody's watching, how you do anything is how you do everything. And, you know, the, oh gosh, it's so hard not being able to use references to talk about it. <laughs> telling you it shows up. And I think about that, like, if I'm walking in my office and I see a piece of trash on the floor, like even if it's a small little piece of trash, how you do anything is how you do everything. Stop and pick up that trash. I don't just walk past it. You know, if when I, I get up in the, in the morning, it's like, man, I really love to put some creamer in my coffee, but instead I'm now putting protein shake in my coffee. Doesn't taste as good. How I do anything is how I do everything. I'm mentally like, I don't need it. Like it tastes just fine. Stop being a little, stop being a wimp, Chris. Like it tastes just fine. Still, still doing the trick and I'm, and I'm getting protein. So like shut up. But how I show up to a meeting, am I prepared? Am I not prepared? How I show up to a podcast, am I prepared? Am I not prepared? Mm -hmm. It got easy to get in the system. Scott, you do podcasts because we have, there's the Rise Up Kings podcast. Um, you got to prep for these things to get the best out of that podcast, but it's really easy to just use, you know, my ad libbing and, and roll through it. How mm -hmm. I show up, how you do anything. So I'm telling my son the same thing. And that's like, did you get up? You said you're going to get work out this morning. Did you? Nope. Okay. Like, don't come down on him. Just say, how you do anything is how you do everything. Right. And now I have to tell him, I just look at him. He's like, yep, I know, I know, but it's working. Like we're making mm -hmm. price 13, but I mean, he's right. He knows he gets it. It's applicable to everybody. And I think it's true. It's not a cliche. Like people will be like, oh, it sounds, that's a cliche. It's not, it's a hundred percent true. How you show up matters. And some of the lessons that you learn in this just proves that you just got to feel the pain with it to, for it to actually stick in your, in your brain. And sometimes it's other people that experience the pain because of the choices that you make. Mm. It's one of the other things that comes up here and which just shows up all over our lives too. Like we'll make choices that negatively impact other people, but we're, we aren't necessarily uh, like 
we aren't necessarily the ones that are paying for our own choices. Sometimes the choices we make, other people are paying for, and you get to learn that lesson here in a profound way also. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that reminder. I, I, like, I hope you sleep well tonight. Had a, had a couple of visionaries or visions there that I remember. Uh, yeah, a very impactful exercise. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, listen, there's obviously so much that we haven't talked about and you're probably like, why aren't these guys talking about it? Well, that's part of the experience um, is, is you do need to go and learn and not knowing is part of the experience too. So, um, and, and I don't know how to explain it any other way than like, you can go to the Rise of Kings website, check it out. You'll see some videos. You'll get an idea of some of the things just to give you an idea. And again, don't use your age or your, or your weight as an excuse because I, in my class alone, it was like we had you know, the old guy and the overweight guy and all of them finished. Everybody finished. It's great. It's fantastic. Um, but I want to do something for those who, um, you know, who've made it this long, who, who are interested and understand. And, and to me, these are the high caliber people because they're following us and they see, okay, like there's something in there that I don't know what it is or whatever it is. You're still here and you're listening. So I reached out to Skylar. I said, Hey man, can we give something to the, to the point listeners? And, and so the, what I went to was called the refinery. It's for business owners and you have to be accepted into the refinery pro. Like you have to submit and you have to be accepted into it. So these guys aren't lacking people coming to these events. Okay. So it's not that I just went to Skylar and said, Hey man, like, let's give this gift of transformation and experience to one of the listeners who uh, I originally was going to say something right up front. I didn't want to. I didn't want that. I want them. I wanted those that got through it, listen to it, and then offer that up. So I asked Skylar, I said, Hey, and I'm going to tell it exactly like our conversation went, Hey, mm -hmm. let's give one of these away. Let's give one of these away to, uh, this is a $5,500 event. I think 55, 6,000, something like that. Yep. yep. Um, and let's give one of these to, to, to somebody to go and have that transformation. And he said to me, we should do 75% because there needs to be skin in the game. And I was like, you know what? You're right. It's too easy to quit when you got nothing into it. You got no financial gain. Like you got a little bit of money into it. Then it keeps your mind because you will get cold feet. You could get cold feet as it gets closer to the event because our lives are busy or whatever. So, so Skylar committed to uh, covering 75% of this event. That's a, now you got no excuse. Okay. It's like 15, 16, I don't even remember what the leftover money. I'm not fantastic at math, but that's why I got a phone and a calculator, but it's not that much money. So you got no excuse, but thank you one for, for doing that, uh, Skylar. Mm -hmm. and, and the way that you're going to go to, um, to, uh, um, put your name in the hat for that. And, and we're going to, you know, uh, we'll let Skylar pick out, you know, who it's going to be randomly. It's nobody that I know. Um, but you need to go to riseupkings.com forward slash TTP, correct? Is that what we did? Yep. So? Yep. That's right. Okay, riseupkings.com forward slash TTP. If you don't know what that acronym stands for, it's to the point. Genius, right? Uh, so just, you can go there, you can submit that, and then we'll randomly pick a winner. Um, and when we do, don't worry, we'll reach out to you directly when we pick that winner to make this simple so you're not sitting around wondering and waiting. And, and, and I think this episode airs in two weeks. So it will be, uh, let's Skylar, let's just commit to the following week after this episode airs. So the, these, these episodes air on Tuesdays. So we'll follow up that, you know, that by that following Tuesday, that's gives them a week. That's plenty of, that's plenty of time. Um, and cause the, the next, the next refineries in September, right? It's September, it's in September and October. Yeah. Okay. So we have, we have two back to back and yeah, we've never done this before. So when you asked, I'm like, I'm down. I'm down because it's you. I'm down because it's you. So yeah, that, I think it's cool. I'd love. I'd love if somebody feels that they are looking for a transformational experience. Then, heck yeah, let's do it. And by the way, if if Skylar ends up picking your name, you reach out to me to 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 ask me what the details are. I'm still not going to tell you. <laughs> That's part of the deal. <laughs> but I appreciate you doing that, Skylar. Again, like you have a big heart, and yeah. thanks for putting this thing together. And and like yeah. I cannot, like I said, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate. I mean, listen, you hear this all the time. People say to you, Skylar, oh, thank you so much for putting this thing together. And I'm glad that they do that to you because everybody like you're we're literally imp you're literally impacting people's lives, changing lives. Jeremy, same thing. The coaches, same thing. Like so half the guys are just showing up and, and on as a volunteer and doing it. It's like I'm like, hey, I'm going to I have my I have to like sit to some of my buddies. They're like high performing buddies. And I'm like, when you guys go, man, I'd love to be there. I don't want to ruin their experience by being there because I want them to be open. But if they're cool with it, like I love to be there you know, as a volunteer. 
Um, you know, because I'll share one little thing with you guys. I didn't know this when I was there. I didn't learn it until the very last day when we were done and back at the hotel that a customer of mine was in my pod. A customer of mine wow. was in my pod. Wow. Thank goodness we were in different. <laughs> he was in the first group. I was in the second group. So we weren't like in each other's individual groups, but, uh, but you learned everybody's stuff a little bit. And so pretty cool, man. It was one of my customers in, uh, in my class. What are the odds? Apparently good. So pretty interesting. Um, but you know, the, the, to me, it was, um, it was, it was important to me to, to try and give this gift to somebody else one way or another, whether it be referral or do, or using the podcast to do, to do the same thing. So, because these two dudes here and all the coaches there will pour into you like you've never been poured into you before and will hold you accountable like you've never been held accountable before. And if you lean into it, if you're vulnerable enough to lean into it, all into it, I promise you, I promise you, you will leave that event changed and better and whatever it is that you're going. And when you pull that shit out of the cave and put it in the light and get it out, there's something transformational just in that moment that opens you up and you're like, not afraid not afraid to talk about it. You can get it off your chest and the chips are going to fall where they're going to fall. When you get back, if it's, if it's relationship, you know, or if it's business or whatever, but at least you're now, you now actually have the right fighting chance to go and, and win that battle and on, and the tools to keep going on going. So thank you guys for giving me that. hundred mm percent, -hmm. man. No, it's uh, dude. It's, I love your heart around this stuff too. It's uh, I can tell, not everybody goes all in, man, and really does the work, but you're, you're putting in some serious work. So I'm, I'm excited to see like what I, I, and excited to hear what your purpose is too, when we get a chance to talk offline. So, yeah. Well, just so you know, like minutes apart. So we're going to hang out soon, like <laughs> whether, whether you want to or not, we're going to hang out soon. <laughs> we're going to do it. I'm down. I will just say, if you just take a look at this, the, the ruck app and you look at who's leading uh, my group, mm. it can be Oh, proud. snap, son. Let's go. Let's go. Except there ain't no catching. What's his, is it? Craig, Greg, Greg. Yeah. Hey, yeah. No one's catching Greg painter. Jeez. <laughs> so anyway, Hey guys, thank you for your time and coming on on the Friday for me. I know you, I know your schedules are crazy packed. So thanks for giving me that, that, that time. I appreciate it. And thanks for giving our listeners that time and to, uh, you know, to, to you guys, man, keep, keep on doing what you're doing. Keep scaling and growing that thing. Cause it's making such a massive impact. Yeah. I appreciate that, man. Thanks for having us on for sure. Yeah, absolutely, man. My pleasure. All right, boys. Hey, thank you again. And listeners, take advantage of this situation, right? Like this is easy. And, and even if you don't like go to the website, check it all out. There's, there's uh, multiple things that you can get involved in and do. There's a rise up Queens piece that we didn't quite talk about that your, that your uh, wife can go to and be a part of. And, and uh, Skylar's wife, Jessica leads it. And I'm not sure who else, but um, we got to meet her and she coached us a little bit in the event. Fantastic. She gets it. She gets it. She knows what you're thinking and, and what they're what you say and what they hear. Like it's really, really good. But but take advantage of this. Like, look at this as like your key. This is your ticket. For me, it was a complete reset. I'm a successful guy. You look outwardly, I've got it all. But inwardly, I was in a little bit of a cage and I need to clear that funk because I'm 45. I have a lot of life left. I got a lot of runway. And I needed to unlock some doors and get some of that stuff out and find ways to deal with it. And I did. And it's because of you guys, the, because of the rise up King, Skylar, Jeremy, the rest of the coaches, BJ, um, John, uh, my, my brother, like the, my brothers in the pod 48, but it works and it works well if you lean in. And that would be like on my heart to say, lean in, go to the website, check it out, submit the form again, riseupkings.com forward slash TTP, submit it. And man, I hope you win. And if you do win, when Skylar calls you, please reach back out to me and let me know that you won so that I can pour into you from my side. So guys, appreciate you to our listeners. Appreciate you. You don't got to do everything, but you got to do something. No zero days.